Right now we're on the central New South Wales coast, just a little north of Sydney. The lakes here have a history going back at least 125,000 years when uh, some sand started to come ashore and fill in the bays when sea level was like today's. Many of the lakes, when you look at the sediments, have had a history of being like an estuarine lagoon or a bay of some sort with salty water first up before moving almost fully to fresh water conditions. They're totally different lakes. We have the Mile lakes and the very top lake in the Mile is very, very clear water, is a big lake. It's a whole different lake to what the bottom lake is because the bottom lake is sort of can be brackish whereas the top lake is fairly fresh because of the distance to get there and there's no rivers that run into it. It's just runoff from the rainfall. Smith's Lake then has another setup where it's a, it's a closed lake and only opens to the ocean generally when it's been opened up by man. So it's a, it's a lake like a dam that's you know, a few hundred metres from the ocean. Sometimes when it reaches a certain level they will dig a channel and let it go out into the ocean and the ocean comes in and flushes it. Or if there's a big flood it might open itself through pressure just across the beach into the ocean. So that makes Smith's Lake a very unique situation. I think the issue for Smith's Lake is that it's one of the series of lakes which were settled early and because different kinds of uh, residential development, uh, resort development, caravan parks etc have been placed around the edge there, there is a human pressure that says if it's raining heavily and I'm getting flooded you open up that entrance and let that water out. Do it now. So. The problem with Smith's is there's this human pressure to manage it intensely. If there had been no houses there, it would have been just fine because it's functioned quite normally over the years. If the fresh water's come up and flooded, it'll break out naturally. Occasionally the, the big storms would come in and break the other way. That lake has functioned very, very well, thank you, all by itself, but once humans start using the foreshores and the way environment, you've got to spend some political effort and money to, to do some opening. And the different councils and the different management groups have had different views about how to open that up. I think uh, the experience over 10, 15 years is being shown now of where is the right place to open it up and how frequently. And there's also a, a matter of public education to understand how that lake functions. Sponsored by the St. Joe Community Foundation, supporting the arts, education, health care, and the environment.